entertain a motion to suspend the rules. So moved. By Mr. Lawrence, is there a second? Second. By Mr. Barrett, any discussion? All in favor? It's approved on a 5 0 vote. If the clerk would read the revisions, please. To the policy agenda, we're adding resolution appointing Dwight Johnson, Ward 4 representative to the Biloxi Civil Service Commission. Is there a motion to approve the amended agenda? Moved. By Mr. Lawrence, is there a second? Second. By Mr. Barrett, thank you. And all in favor? Thank you. That's approved on a 5 0 vote. That brings us to the mayor's report. <laughs> I don't think I have a report, but it, uh, we've uh, gone through some, I guess, some challenges uh, since the beginning of the fiscal year, and we still continue to shake some things out. And unless Mike has some uh, I, I comments. Mike, just for a second, Major. Speaking of challenges, we're investigating a drainage issue on Atkinson Road, that's in Ward 3. We're investigating the drainage uh, problems at two residences at Woodland Park Drive. That's in Ward 3. We're investigating and vacuuming uh, the cleaning the drain boxes and the pipes are adjacent to the Carolee Circle area. Uh, we're repairing, that's in Ward 4. We're repairing scheduled uh, repairs to Palafox Ditch, one, one uh, uh, residence where the ditch is caving in. We've begun the Terra drainage project uh, on Terra Lane today. In Ward 6 on Campbell Drive, our insurance adjuster is working with the uh, residents um, that had the sewage backup. And there's also a, a project on Campbell Drive in Ward 6 where we're repiping a ditch that's uh, not, not satisfactory for the water. What, we're doing what, an investigation what, of a, excuse of a, me. a sinkhole excuse me, Mike. Hampton Lane. What, where is that in Ward 6? What drive? Campbell Drive. Cam Campbell. Campbell. Yeah. Campbell. Campbell. All right. I, I, that's just a partial list. I just wanted to let you realize we're, we are chasing our tails right now with um, drainage issues around all around the, the city. And um, an update on the hiring, we, a week ago we had 74 vacancies, we still have 74 vacancies. And that concludes the report, unless you have any questions. Well, well, I don't know if I mentioned, it's a beautiful day outside today. It is, it is. Okay, no, I know we had that heavy rain last week and that's uh, created some issues, so appreciate that report. Uh, we don't have any departmental reports. That brings us to the council report. Mr. Lawrence, anything? I, don't, I have, really have no report. The only thing I'd like to do, I'd like to close this meeting and honor my son-in-law, Dennis Bond, who passed away earlier today. So, and I honor him. We actually worked for Public Works for City of Bluxy. He probably fished in every tournament the City of Bluxy ever had because he's an avid fisherman. So, in honor him, I'd just like to close the meeting. And what is his name, George? Second. What is his name? Dennis Mines. M-E-I-N-S. M-E-I-N-S, okay. All right, uh, Mr. Deming, anything? A couple things. Um, first, I was on the phone earlier today with a former resident of yours, and she told me to thank you for finally getting the Circle Park tennis courts fixed eight years later. Um, <laughs> Oh, just, just a soft dab, just a joke. She really did appreciate it. She just wanted me to tell you thank you. Well, thank you, Robert. <laughs> Mike, do we have a, an update on the concrete, the schedule for the bluffs? No, I had, I had no change since last week. We just chasing our tail. We haven't gotten to it yet. Yeah, I don't know if we had a. Have it marked. We need a, we need help from the ca uh, county to do it. Do we have? Did we get the? Um, did they sign off on helping us? Or are we just waiting? Um, my question is, we're just still waiting for scheduling, right? Correct. Okay, so we haven't gotten to, the, to we haven't gotten it scheduled after all this other stuff we're doing. And you said you, you I know you guys went out there and walked the Carolee Circle Baywood area. Carolee Circle is a real interesting problem. There is no drainage in Carolee Circle. All the the way it's designed, it's all supposed to run out to Baywood. I think I'm saying that right to Baywood. Mm -hmm. So we started by. Um, making sure that the Baywood drainage is working functionally. Um, 
by getting a vacuum truck out there, and I think it's there today, vacuuming the trucks, the uh, drain boxes, and make sure that they're open and clean. And then, and then if 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 that's still not satisfactory, we're going to have to figure out how to how to add drainage to that neighborhood. There's not one single drain box in the neighbor in the circle. Right. Well, it's the circle is actually like a. Uh, a horseshoe mm -hmm. and it comes down to the the boxes on baywood as it wraps around now i was out there and i have the videos from all the rain and you can just see the water come from the stone bridge development just flooding through the neighbors i mean you can see streams and rivers just cutting paths through the yards um, i think we might want to look at some way to either put some a ravine or or some some dredge something that will help guide the water down the back alleyway now there's some people in there that that jerry may want to send some of his uh people out there but uh someone's built a fence and a pool and in, in, in what i think is the easement portion the, the 10 foot gap that's in between the two property lines or supposed to be available between the two property lines um so if we just we need to have someone run out there now we dealt with that on the other side of carol lee jerry i know we talked about that over um, by the Shipleys, and we had the guy built that fence divider and made that whole easement part of his, of his backyard, and we had to make him take it down on the other side of Carolee. I think they've done the same thing. So we need to go out there and make sure that, that the brush and the, and the, the um, fences aren't built all the way to the ground. A lot of those houses built those fences without putting that two-inch gap so water can flow, so it would actually block, create some type of blockage. If we can go out there and make sure that everybody's up to code and allows that water to be released and flow easily, that may really re, uh, give us some relief on a, thank you. Um, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Damming. Mr. Glavin. Uh, just a couple of short things to kind of keep on your radar. Kimbro, that area, I continue to get a few phone calls on. We still haven't been able to deter the speeders that kind of whip through that neighborhood. So if we can just kind of keep that on the radar, um, I, it's almost every week or every three or four days I get a phone call kind of reporting it. My suggestion was that they make sure that they report anything, any vehicles they can identify. If they can report those, that would be helpful for law enforcement. But it, it seems that that's kind of one of the neighborhoods that I, I continuously get, get some phone calls from. Um, the other uh, issue, there was a, a resident, I believe it was over around the Ellington area, that um, they had an issue with the, uh, I guess their road, uh, or I'm sorry, their land eroding. And we went out there and we thought it was one of the old pipes, and I think we may have even replaced it, but then it reoccurred and started sinking some more. I don't know if we have an update on that, Mike, or if that's still just on the radar with the deluge of stuff that you're dealing with. Let me get with you afterwards. I, don't, I need to know the address. I'm okay, not, I'll, I'll pull it up. Oh, I, we, I remember there was somebody we, that we went out and looked, and it was like only one small little area. The rest of the street was pretty good. So uh, I'm, she, I'm not sure that's the same house. Yeah, I'll get with you. I'll get with you on the address. It, it's the one that I, I think it's the one you're referencing, but I'll get the exact address after this meeting. Just FYI, Camp Forjax will be, should be paved tomorrow. Awesome. That we've been waiting for Warren uh, paving. Uh, you you all have approved the, the new contract at the last meeting, or it's, maybe it's today we're doing it. Uh, where anyway, we've got a new contract and they're ready to roll, and they're starting with Camp Four Jackson. They said they would try and do it starting tomorrow. Well, the good news is that they're going to get a nice uh, new surface. Uh, I guess the bad news is that now they can. They don't have to tap on their brakes, so we may have to start uh, policing that area for speeding too soon. But when FYI, the uh, the uh, homeowners association has voted and uh, to remove the speed table in Taylor Oaks. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thank you. That concludes my report. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Barrett. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, I know you said that um, we still had the 74 vacancies. Have we been able to hire anyone at Public Works yet, or is? I, I, and they're going through background checks. Okay. But I asked just before the meeting started, and the number is still 74. So. Okay. And I know that we have a long list of things, but I want to add something to that list. Um, off of Oaklawn Road, um, there's an area. It's I guess called Plummerville, it's like Pinecrest, Evelyn, Dixie, Stella, Virginia, that area. Um, 
the, the ditches in there, the grass, it's, it's in really bad shape. And I've, I've gotten calls, um, several of them over the last couple of weeks, and it's dried out now. And uh, before it was too wet and nothing could be done. But while it's dry, if we could get some attention paid to that so that um, it's a real wet area. So before we start getting heavy rains again, it doesn't get back to, um, back to that. And then, um, uh, I was going to add that on your um, agenda today is the approval of the new boom mower. That yes, they've been I saw asked that. For, which is going to help their productivity, I think, a great deal. Correct, yes. Um, also, I know that we can't do all of Shorecrest because it's in the plans to do water and sewer and we would just have to go and tear up the road. But there's a section of the road just north of the bridge um, and the sewer plant that has gotten really, really bad. If there's anything, like even if we could go in and do like what we did on um, Old Wool Market and cut a couple of sections of that out and put some in just until we get that water sewer project done. Um, it's a really heavy traffic road and it's just getting worse and worse. Um, and then also we had, um, we've had several people request some trees to be cut down at the end of Boyette and Shorecrest blocking. Um, and I talked to Mr. Creel and he got with Mr. Nolan and they're past what's required or whatever to to cut them down but there's a lot of bushes right there too that that impedes the the vision your vision for oncoming traffic so if we could just even get those bushes cleaned out yeah. um not necessarily the trees but just those bushes that are right along the road i don't think any of those trees are protected those ones that if, yeah but the, the bushes about, yeah, yeah. And it, you can't see around that corner people yeah coming. so if we could even just get those bushes cleaned out maybe not the trees that would help somewhat to where because you can't see anything and then you've got cars um that area sure Chris, you know you get, it's a 35 speed limit i believe but you know people doing more like 55 and um you know it's just a matter of time before we we have a bad wreck right there because you can't see that traffic that's coming north and um that's all i have Thank you, Mr. Barrett, and I have no report. That brings us to the public agenda and citizens' comments. We'll permit three minutes for uh, anyone or make available three minutes for any speaker who wishes to address the council or the administration for that matter at this time, and we'll set aside up to 45 minutes cumulatively. When you are recognized, please come up to the table where Mr. Ramsey is now and sign in as Mr. Ramsey is doing at this moment. And then Mr. Ramsey will soon speak his name clearly so the clerk can record that. And then when Mr. Ramsey is done, we'll see if there's anybody else who wishes to address the council. Gilbert Ramsey, Military Veterans Outreach Specialist. I come to you today, to, I let you some literature on your top of your tables here, to introduce MDEQ Summit coming up November the 9th. And, what, and they have a, a deadline October the 29th to introduce more projects. So I'm having this opportunity to introduce you to a public-private partnership opportunity with the state. We'd like to introduce an L3C Corporation. L3C Corporation Louisiana recognizes, and that is a 501c3 when LLC incorporated appropriately. So, and also, we're coming through, through you with Blue Economy Quality of Life. You recognize we have 12 casinos on the Mississippi Gulf Coast. How many amenities for loved ones and caretakers? Ask yourself that. So, next question. What opportunities are for them? to enjoy blue economy, quality of life. The University of Southern Mississippi is looking at this with the Marine Technology Gulf Port Harbor. We're looking at this with all inland in waterway activities, and we're also looking at outreach for, to incorporate um, within all the national parks within Jackson County. We're going to call it Coastal One Initiative. I have this opportunity to recognize this appropriately with y'all, ladies and gentlemen. I've come to this standpoint 
because tomorrow is a Veterans Health Administration innovation thing I also left information about. You can go on site and introduce it for commercialization opportunities, innovative ideas. This all has to compel us to entertain the children for STEM programs. We have this opportunity. Look at these packages I left for y'all and incorporate with your students in the outreach capabilities you have. It is tomorrow, it's virtual for two days in the state of Washington, D.C. And it's an opportunity for students to have a higher learning education. I'm staying in the state of Mississippi. I have an opportunity to go international, but I'm not doing that. My mother's buried at the National Cemetery. My father's buried at Irish Hill. And I'm a great grandpa. My backyard is 500,000 acres. The Southern National Forest is my backyard. I have this for y'all. I'm coming out of the woods to incorporate this with y'all's passion and initiative. The Inspire Magazine at the VA Hospital offered me to, to do a story at the VA Hospital, and that incorporates all VA hospitals in Texas to Florida. Ms. Mary Nelson's Community Services Director, she has this opportunity to offer this to me to make sure that we have this vision. Please. Represent us appropriately. We are the hospitality state. We are not looking as what? <clears throat> Mystery burning any longer. Thank you, Mr. Your assistant outreach. Have a blessed day and be safe. Thank you, Mr. Ramsey. Is there anyone else who'd like to address the council? On my left, your right, anybody on that side who would like to address the council? Anybody on my right, your left, that would like to address the council? Ms. Smith, did you want to speak or communicate with the council? Okay, thank you. Anybody in the back? Did you want to come up and talk or no? Okay, I'll meet you after. Okay, thank you. All right, I'll meet Ms. Smith after this meeting. Thank you, Ms. Smith. All right, uh, that concludes the citizens' comments. That brings us to the policy agenda. If the clerk would read uh, item A, the ordinance, please. Ordinance to rescind ordinance number 2457, amending portions of chapter eight for the flood damage and prevention ordinance. Who made the motion on that, please? Lawrence and Gons. Lawrence and Gons. All right, the motion was made by Mr. Lawrence during the first reading, the second by Mr. Gines. Mr. Lawrence, any comments or questions? Uh, Jerry. <clears throat> yes, sir, what happened when we, were, when we were putting the ordinance together to adopt the additional one foot of free board, uh, we used an outdated template to put that together and uh, I, I should have called it. Uh, I was looking at the sheets that were put in front of me, you know, just to make sure that we had added the extra foot of free board. And so essentially what happened is that we adopted the older ordinance rather than updating the newer ordinance. So what we're doing now is rescinding, rescinding that uh, ordinance that was passed the last time with the additional foot of free board. This will get us back to the right ordinance the one that uh, we should be under, and at some date in the future, we may come back to you with the additional one foot of free board. This actually, um, actually the good side of this is, if there is a good side, is that um, we have a couple of major projects that haven't been announced yet that had already designed to the one foot free board, and uh, this would have created a, a major problem for those and uh, so what, what we'll do, let's get back to the, the right ordinance, the one with the one foot of free board, the most current that we're supposed to be under. And then at some point at the mayor's recommendation, we'll, we may come back with that extra one foot of free board. Jerry, let me jump ahead. You know, like I said, we, there are a lot of things that, you know, if we were just arbitrarily throw that other foot and, and some things may com be complicated in DC and in other places that really, uh, it, it, it's, it's right for us to be very, very cautious in this situation. Mm -hmm. So I think it's the right thing to do uh, is, is to hold off on 
throwing that extra foot on, on you know, uh, just uh, as a suggestion, and we don't, we, uh, there's a lot of things pending that this could impact as well as some of the things that uh, uh, we've talked about at the Businessmen's Club about you know, the uh, flood insurance and some of these things could make a big, big difference to our uh, development opportunity. So I think it's the right thing to do and when it's time and weighing the consequences of doing it or not doing it, yes, uh, we'll, move, we'll move forward with that. Okay. How will this... Sorry, I'll let George and then I'll get to Felix and I'll get to I was out of turn. I'm, I go ahead, Mr. L go ahead. No, go ahead, Mr. Mr. Lawrence. I didn't know if you had any more questions. Speak up. All right, Mr. Gaines, go ahead. No, I, I, I agree with him. And I think that's um, when we were talking um, the last time when we passed it, I think it was a real close four to three vote. And I think that's what we were trying to get across. Uh, so I believe this is the best thing to do. So I agree with at it. This point, at this point, we don't have any documentation that would prove that we would be gaining anything by the extra foot of free board. Absolutely. And in the future, or, if the or avoiding a consequence, too, if, we don't, if there's a consequence okay. of, of doing it or not doing it. And in the future, if the mayor does suggest that we take another look at this, then hopefully we would have some documentation showing how people's uh, flood insurance may have increased, right. their premiums may have increased that we can bring back along with that argument. So we'll we'll wait to that point. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Scale. All right, Mr. Deming. My question was about the consequences, so you answered that. I'm good. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from the council? There being none, I'll call for the question. All in favor of the ordinances presented? It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. If the clerk would read the next item, again, a second reading, item B. Ordinance amending section 596, basis for determining dwelling to be unfit. The motion was by? Lawrence and Gines. Lawrence and Gines, thank you. Mr. Lawrence, any questions or comments? Uh, same thing on this one, Jerry. Can you explain exactly what we're doing with that now? The only thing that we did on this is that when we adopted the, when the council adopted the International Property Maintenance Code, Mr. Deming pointed out that there was the word moral in there, which had been in there for years. And actually the new standard language is health, safety, and welfare. So we changed the word from morals to and welfare. And so this, this language is now in line with what it should be. That's all. That's your city council of Biloxi in action. Thank you all. Thank you. Mr. Gaines? No comment. Thank you. Uh, no comment. <laughs> any other questions or have we, is there more action from the council here in Biloxi? So does that mean he has morals or he, no, or that he means don't have morals? <laughs> so, you know. He doesn't want to go on record as being one of the immoral councilmen. <laughs> all right. Let's, this, let's not get carried council. away. Were there any questions of substance on Good this morning. item? I think I'm the one that takes the heat on this. I'm the one that said we need to remove all the morals from the from the standards. <laughs> so. All right. So we're ready to move forward and we'll call for the question. All in favor of the ordinances presented? <clears throat> it's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. That brings us uh, to item C, a resolution. If the clerk would read that resolution, please. <clears throat> Resolution appointing Harriet Michelle Mitchell to the Biloxi Civil Service Commission. I'll entertain a motion. Motion by Mr. Gaines. Second. Second by Mr. Barrett. Mr. Gaines, any comments? Yeah, I think this is going to be a great appointment. And uh, I think I just left Miss Mitchell uh, uh, earlier, and she left her award. Mm -hmm for a dynamic group of the year. She's gonna be an excellent candidate. So if you don't mind coming up and accepting this award uh, prior to your vote. Congratulations. All right. Anything else, Mr. Gaines? That's it. Mr. Barrett? Sir. Any other comments or questions from the council? All in favor of the resolution as presented? 
It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Um, Ms. Mitchell, while you're here, is there anything you'd like to say? If, if, you, if you'd like to speak, you have to come up to the mic, but you're not obligated to, but. Make sure it's on. And congratulations, by the way. Yes, again, my name is Harriet Mitchell. I am a native of Biloxi. I was a civil service employee for 25 years, and I appreciate and thank you for the appointment. Great, congratulations. Welcome to the team. <laughs> yes. Thank you, Ms. Mitchell. All right, that brings us to the next item on the agenda. This was a late addition, uh, item D. If the clerk would read that item, please. Resolution appointing Dwight Johnson Ward for representative to the Biloxi Civil Service Commission. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. By Mr. Deming, is there a second? I'll second. By Mr. Barrett, thank you, Mr. Barrett. Any comments or questions, um, Mr. Deming? I uh, just want to tell the chief and the deputy chief, they came through. I've had a tough time finding a representative from Ward 4 to sit on the board. It's a, it's, it's a thankless job. And a couple applicants or potential app, uh, appointments that I asked, I, I, I asked them if they would do it. And they said, um, well, I'm busy that day. <laughs> and I said, if we, I didn't even tell you what, what day you meet. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, so, so Jason Davis called me and he said, uh, Mr. Johnson would, would like to sit on it. And I called him and great guy. And I think he's going to be great for the, for the, for the board. Um, but if we could send him an outline of the things of the duties that it, that would be required of him, I would love to do that after the meeting, after he's already okay. nominated and confirmed. <laughs> I'm just kidding. He's going to be great at it. I, I informed him what the basic duties are, but he does want something in writing. Something he wants a, a book to make sure he's up to speed on whatever he's going to be tasked with. Mr. Barrett, nothing. Any other questions or comments? Uh, the only question I have is is I don't know Mr. Johnson. Can somebody give me just a thumbnail sketch of who he is? He's a former FBI, so I, that should say enough. If you've been naughty, he'll come be a I'm never naughty. I followed the morals clause that we just removed. Okay, thank you. Good enough for me. Call for the question. All in favor of the resolution is presented. It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. That brings us to the consent agenda. I'll entertain a motion. Moved. By Mr. Lawrence. A second by Mr. Gines, a dynamic duo. You ready? All right, Mr. Lawrence, questions on particular items? Yeah, I uh, want to follow up on the question, Q. Why did we use economic development in this particular, borrowing the money from there? For some reason we borrowed it from, only from economic development? That's one, there, a, a, you're using this as a clearing fund. You know, you're aware of the things we're trying to do with the economic development in order to get the, uh, the things cleaned, you know, in before, you know, basically it's, uh, we're gonna, as we get reimbursed both from the uh, coastal Mississippi uh, uh, Board of Supervisors, and we've already put up uh, a, a 197, I think, and, and actually paid for that. This is the remaining of, this is part of the remaining $510,000 that's on the agenda to finish the job that we started before uh, cruising, to finish you know, clearing and cleaning and pruning, beautification. The, uh, basically, that 510 that's on the agenda today between the NGK and, and the Intercorp uh, is gonna be paid, you know, three sources, as I said, Coastal, uh, Board of Supervisors, and 110 made up of a, a few people that uh, we'll let you know about. But that 110 is, is, is intended to be paid back. This is a clearing fund for that project. I made a call just a few minutes ago to Diana Thornton, our excellent accounting director, and I said, if I was a councilman today, what would I ask about all those economic development security fund resolutions? And I think I would ask, what's the balance today and what will it be tomorrow if I approve all these resolutions? And Diana's answer is 4.2 million today, 4.2 million tomorrow. Right. So it's, a, again, as, as we're reimbursed from these projects, we're not gonna spend it. This is a budget entry. We're gonna spend $510,000 and this is where the source will be coming. We didn't spend anything yet. We will, the cash will go out, 
and the cash comes in for the, the revenue part of the deal, it'll, it'll flush it in and out. 4.2 million fund balance, 4.2 fund balance after the business is cleared if we're successful in getting the, the last $110,000. That's a good deal. It is a good deal. <laughs> it's a good one. Your council in action right there. We appreciate that. There's an action again, Daddy. The moral council. <laughs> the moral. A moral count. A, a moral, a moral. A moral. And the other one on uh, S, on uh, the engineering company you hired, Mike. Did you oh, say you have certain hey, projects for them? S is in Sam. S is S is in Sierra. And Howard. Howard. And Howard consultant. Yeah. Right. Howard, that's that's the uh, consultant that is our, our second. We we have two professional engineers, registered professional engineers in the uh, engineering department today. One one is permanent, the other is a consultant. That's the consultant fee. So I mean, you have certain products you put this man on. Put you plan on doing. It says going on to you, so I figured you handling it. That that resolution extends her, uh, the consultant, uh, till April. And yeah, hopefully, somebody you have permanent hire by then. On. That's what I was asking you. Mm -hmm. I know you extended. I said, do you have project that they're working on now? Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. I, I could. I'd be happy to show you a list of uh, almost uh, three dozen projects and who they're assigned to each each one of the engineers. So we're getting our money worth. I hope so. I, I, I certainly think so. I mean, the outcome is uh, the, the actual projects themselves. We'll see how they roll out. Yeah, well, you're, not, you're always getting on us about we voted for everything. Well, this one's on you. <laughs> the door got it goes that way this time. It's on you. So I hope it works out fine. Thank you. That's it for me. Thank you, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, Mr. Gines, any questions about the consent agenda? Any? Other? All right, Ms. Newman, Mr. Deming, Mr. Glavin. I'm good. Mr. Barrett. Nothing. And I'm good as well. All right. Uh, we'll call for the question on the consent agenda. All in favor, the agenda is presented. It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Are there any exceptions? that you would like noted, there being none. We will move on to the code enforcement hearings. Uh, Mr. Creel. Is there anyone here to speak on this matter? 240 Benaki Avenue, Raquel L. Greathouse. There being no one, this hearing is closed. That brings us to the next hearing, Cheryl McCune. Mm -hmm. Cheryl McEwen, 181, 181 Gardenia Street. Yes, yeah, yes. That's still in violation. Is there here? Is there anyone here who wishes to to speak on this matter? One eighty one Gardenia Street, or Miss Cheryl McCune. There being no one, this hearing is closed. Uh, that brings us to hearing C, Mr. Creel. Cynthia White, two fifty seven Graham Avenue. This property is still in violation. Is there anyone here to speak on this matter? 257 Graham Avenue, Cynthia White. Anyone here to speak on this matter? There being no one, this hearing is closed. Hearing D, Mr. Creel. State of Mississippi, 321 Benaki Avenue. This property has been purchased from the state of Mississippi. It has a new owner. So we're gonna have to go back and start over with this one with the new owner. <clears throat> All right, no one is here to speak on 321 Benaki Avenue. 
This hearing is closed. It brings us to hearing E, Mr. Creel. Eileen M. Wells, Zero Brady Drive. This property is still in violation. Is there anyone here to speak on this Brady Drive matter? Eileen, Aileen M. Wells. There being no one, this hearing is closed. Thank you, Mr. Creel. That brings us to the routine agenda. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. The motion second. by Mr. Barrett. Second. And a second by Mr. Glavin. Mr. Mr. Barrett, any questions? Um, no, ask. I will give George my time. You're going to defer to Mr. Lawrence, okay. Mr. Lawrence. Walter back. Give us some good news on all these updates. <clears throat> so within the past few weeks, of course, we received over 1.99 million, and we had that additional 1.28 million I mentioned at the last council. It's in step four or five. So in about 15 days or less, we should have it in our accounts. Everything rolling good? Yes, sir. We stand on top of it? Trying to. All right. Thank you. Any other questions related to the routine agenda? Comments by the council? Yep. There being none, all in favor of the routine agenda is presented. It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you. Is there a motion to adjourn in memory of Dennis Mines? I believe the motion was made by Mr. Lawrence. Right. And uh, is there a second? I believe all the council will second that, Mr. Lawrence. Uh, all in favor of adjournment? All opposed? All right, thank you. It's approved on a 7-0 vote. Thank you all for attending today. Ms. Smith, Azure Smith, 